Hey there, it's Brian from Managed Comics, and I thought I would do a quick little video uh, kind of detailing the blog post that we did on how to survive the retail paradigm shift. This post was picked up by Bleeding Cool, and I'm going to do a update on it next week on Bleeding Cool, which is going to be really around... There was a question asked about you know casual buyers and uh, and like the lapsed buyer and how you also cater to them in this new world and and that's a great question so I'll I'll address that kind of totally separately but for now let's talk about the fact that retail is making a huge uh, shift so some studies have said that up to thirty percent of all retail space will disappear in the next two years. And that's a lot of uh, retailers. And if we look in the comic space, I mean, it's pretty easy to see how quickly stores have, have shrunk. Um, I know in Manhattan in particular, just rents have raised so much that they've lost about, uh, the last time I counted, it was four different stores. The most recent one being Comic Book Jones in, in Manhattan, which is a huge, like that, that store had a huge following for years and years and years. So this is definitely a big deal, but there are ways that comic stores in particular uh, can survive this. Uh, and, and it's definitely going to require a paradigm shift in thinking and people that can't change their thinking may struggle in this new world. So one of those things is definitely reducing the amount of inventory in your store. I mean, comic stores, if you go into them these days, rely less and less on the big, huge bin of back issues. Um, that was kind of a, a huge trope in comic stores for years, but now you see, you know, current stuff is what sells. Uh, there's a fairly large emphasis on trade paperback sales and book sales and that kind of stuff. So as bookstores have shrunk and, and, you know, reduced, what you are seeing is that comic stores are kind of getting into some of those, some of those uh, areas that the bookstore community would have served uh, previously. So, Reducing inventory is definitely a big issue. Uh, if, if a comic doesn't sell within the first 30 days, it's probably not going to sell. Uh, and definitely things over 90 days are just, they're just not selling at all. So reducing to kind of bare subscriptions on probably 90% of the backlist is definitely going to be something you need to do. And that the stores that I've gone to that are succeeding are definitely doing. Um, so outside of just inventory, so let, let's let's talk kind of subscriptions. You definitely have to have some sort of subscription base, and you know, not to toot our own horn, but that's definitely where Managed Comics comes in because it gives you a digital subscription platform that helps you to really know what your customers want and have a lot more control over your ordering. Uh, outside of that, though, you definitely need to be a social hotspot, and and this may be as simple as hosting gaming nights, events, you know, that kind of thing. Things that encourage people to get out of their house because as society has evolved, uh, cocooning is becoming more and more of a thing. And that's the phenomenon where people just don't want to leave their house. I mean, you go outside of your house and it's, it's expensive to get around. It's hard to find parking in a lot of places. You have to travel. Um, you know, the reality is comic stores are as they've contracted over the years and there are less actual comic stores, the distance people have to travel to get to their local comic store has increased. So people may not come every week. They may be down to once a month or something like that. And so giving them reasons outside of just come and get your stuff uh, is definitely something you need to think about. There's some great stores that I know of like Tales of Tomorrow in my parents' basement, as well as a comic shop. They've all opened up new ways of, of thinking. Uh, Tales of Tomorrow has a cafe next to them. Uh, my parents' basement actually has a craft brewery in it. Uh, not Sorry, not craft brewery, craft beer bar and uh, a gastro pub. A comic shop has the, the what's it called? Geek? The, oh, man, it starts with geek. They've, they've got a store next to them that is uh, basically a bar and, and restaurant. Um, so these are all things that definitely are unique and encourage people to come back. It, you can also do it by just, you know, having an event once in a while. Have uh, the one of the local stores in London, Ontario, 
LA Moods, they have a graphic novel of the month club and they literally open their doors after hours one, one night a month to have a graphic novel discussion. It's genius in two ways. One, they're selling 15 units of that graphic novel every month and, and some of it's back stock. So they'll sell, you know, 15 units of Watchmen they did recently. Um, so those are things that they can think about as well. Having a strong digital presence is definitely necessary. And that doesn't just mean that you need to have a website. Although in my opinion, every store in the world, every business in the world needs a website. And why do I say that? Well, a website is the cheapest form of marketing, which you completely own. The store also needs to have an email newsletter. You can do this from simple things like uh, MailChimp, which is completely free, or you can do it with, you know, paid platforms as well. Manage comics. Hey, we've got built in email newsletter capabilities in our system. And it's something that we strongly encourage story owners to use. Um, so if you don't have a full website, you at the very least need a Google my business page, which says your hours and which you keep updated with your current hours. It literally takes three seconds to update your hours in Google My Business. You probably want a Facebook page so that you can have conversations on Facebook. Um, when I was running all new comics, we found that like 25% of our new requests came through Facebook. And then on top of that, you may want something like an Instagram account. Comics are super visual. It's really easy to take a quick picture with your cell phone when new comics come in on Wednesday and say, hey, these are new things. If you happen to, to sell unique things, like maybe your store sells a lot of golden age and silver age books, like those are the kinds of things that are visual and really, really impressive on something like Instagram. But definitely having a strong digital presence is a necessity in 2019. And it's gonna be 2020 soon. And finally, comic store management software. In order to be able to sell comics well in a, in a zero or near zero inventory comic store uh, environment, you definitely need to know who wants what and make sure they get it. Um, what One of the nice things about something like managed comics is that we can actually capture credit card information for your customers and they can basically, when their new stuff comes out, you can invoice them and instantly get the money into your account. So you don't have to wait until they come in once a week, once a, every two weeks, once a month, once every two months. You can instantly have their uh, have the money back in because I know as well as you do that you're paying Diamond in much shorter terms than once a month or once every two months, right? You're probably on seven, maybe 14 day terms. So you need to get that cash in. Cash flow is king. Um, so definitely we can help with that kind of thing because that's the stuff we do. As well, we give your customers tools that let them figure out what's out and what's coming out and, and make sure they're subscribing to the things that they want to get. So that's my little pitch on why, uh, why the paradigm shift is happening and what is happening uh, in it and how Managed Comics can help you to make more money, survive, thrive and uh and do way better than you've ever done before that's it thanks